this time on Holy Ghost Notes. Cool podcast, you should go on it. People dying everywhere. <laughs> hell no. Well, it means to be washed by the blood of the lamb. Go to hell, brother. Where did that come from? So kind. Ah! Yo, yo, yo. What's up? It's Tim Anderson and Matt Griner, and uh, this is the Holy Ghost Notes podcast. It sure what, is. What is up, Matt? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, not a whole lot new since the last time we talked. I know uh, we've actually been talking more often because you're getting your studio like set up to the nines over there. Yeah. Trying. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty neat, man. I think uh, you're a step above what I've got going on over here at this point. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> For podcasting, I'm still inferior. For recording drums and, you know, monitoring what I'm playing. And live Maybe. streaming drums and teaching drums. and <laughs> Yeah, it's been really good. I got an Allen Heath SQ5. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a digital mixer. I did not know how to use it, and um, I'm learning. We'll just put it that way. Yeah. I, I, I yeah it's like it's like drinking water from a fire hose though you yeah know, I knew what it's like with tech stuff I just I knew how to do certain things and I was like oh I feel like I'm figuring this out and then I had Chris Pollock out yesterday from he lives in near Philly I guess mm-hmm. but he works for ABR he's our front of house guy yeah um and he's like I, I just needed help setting this thing up and getting it going. And once he got here, I was like, oh, geez, I do not know what I'm doing at all. Um, so I, I, I got slightly overwhelmed. I don't know what it's like for you or if you're listening to this and someone's trying to teach you something that's so common knowledge to them that they just sort of say it out of the side of their mouth. And it's very <laughs> just common sense. But you need it yeah. in layman's terms, but you're afraid to ask. Yep. Can you can you say that again, but less scientifically? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Say it again, but much slower. Yeah. And in English, please. <laughs> yes. I need English. So it's I crazy learned how, a few it, things. It's crazy how you could be, uh, you know, in the music industry for 20 year, 20 plus years, right? At a professional level, in your case. And there's still so much to learn. 20 years. Not yet. Not yet. That made me feel Not really old. Not yet. Well, you've been playing drums for 20 years. Yeah. Besides, yeah. I mean, yeah, a while. <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, I, I don't really know anything about this part of the industry. I, I knew how to play drums. I've known how to play drums. I'm still learning how to play them. But the other part of the other parts of the industry are so foreign to me. What happens out at mm. front of house? When, you know, when we're playing a show. Um, yeah. What happens on the management? side on the managerial side what happens on the booking side they're all different facets of the industry that you don't really have to meddle in because you're just so focused on what you're doing i just got done teaching right. my drum student where we talked uh, we talked about the same thing he's like i really mm-hmm. want to play drums professionally and i said yeah. well it'd be dumb of me to not say this up front but maybe i'm kind of dumb for saying it if you do that you're going to give and you're going to compromise on everything else in your life so if you want to be good at multiple things in your life, you probably shouldn't pursue one thing to be great at it because you're going yeah. to have to compromise on something else. And I said, right. is that something you want to do? He's like, oh yeah, drumming's the one thing I want to do with my life. That's it. Wow. And I said, let's do it. You know, But as long as you know <laughs> up front that you're not going to have enough time in the day to do yeah. a bunch of other stuff um, and do this other thing great, um, it's just yeah, kind of the nature of the beast. It takes it takes sacrifice. Yeah, that's one hundred percent true, and and that's the one thing I I didn't do. I I didn't focus all my efforts in one area, you know, uh, which is also why I know some more of the tech stuff. You know, apprenticing at a recording studio, I learned a lot doing that, right? And you know, learning how to record my band myself, you know, and um, but I, I, if there's one thing I think we can take from this very short. Uh, Prompto conversation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's that we should never stop learning. You know, there's all there's so much more, even just within the small uh, field of music mm-hmm. or music production. In this case, there's so much to learn, and I think the one thing we can do uh, 
that is the that is wrong or the wrong thing for us to do is to back off or stay away from things that are foreign or feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah. Because sometimes all it takes is just stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit and chipping away at that thing that you uh, that has been intimidating to you for so long. And as soon as you kind of break that wall, there's this whole world of right. experience and knowledge that you can start um, getting excited about. That's how it was for me with like microphones and and studio equipment. And like, I just, I geek out now. Whereas when I was just simply playing drums, it was scary to me. You know, it's yeah. like, I don't even want to touch that. Let someone who knows what they're doing deal with it. I'll just play drums. That's what I need yeah. to do. But now it's exactly. like, there's so much more to it. And I get so more, so much more excited about like drum tones even because I'm recording them now and I can mess with them and I can mix them. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's just mm -hmm. a whole, whole another world. It's, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've talked about that a lot, but like yeah. the thought of something is oftentimes scarier than the thing itself. Yeah, it's true. Like I have to play a show next week. It scares me to think about getting in front of 2,000 people. Once you get up and play in front of 2,000 people and you're actually playing the song in front of those people, it's not scary at all. Or right. if it is scary, it pales in comparison to thinking about it over and over again, mm -hmm. which that's the nature of fear. Right. Fear is thinking about something in advance and playing it up in our minds um, to an extent that oftentimes is just completely insane. Like it's yeah. just not the case. Yeah, that's so true. Fear and worry are both two things that I can say it has never once aided in the situation I was in, you know, being fearful of it or worrying about it or being uptight about it. It never like made the situation better, easier yeah. to handle or <laughs> didn't yeah. help me get through it. You know, it just was there and made it worse. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's very true. So yeah, that's, well, that's a good little tidbit. Um, but that's that to bring it back to my studio, that's sort of what I've been facing and what I've been living now. Like I, I don't know how to do this thing. Mm. And so I either don't do it, which is what I've done for the past decade or I try it. Yeah. So the end game, if I never do it because it's scary, is that I'll never have the chance to do something cool like I'm doing. Yeah. If I try it, I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna spend some money, I'm gonna spend some serious time <laughs> and, <laughs> and just like come up with a bunch of question marks, but ultimately I'm so much happier actually having given it that time and energy. So I, yeah. I would recommend if, if you're listening to this or watching this and you're thinking to yourself, man, I just don't know if I should do that thing, quote unquote, do that thing. If it mm -hmm. fits into the parameters of what is uh, something you're passionate about, something that's helpful to you and helpful to other people, something that um, is is maybe specific to like who you are as a person. You know, drumming is mm -hmm. very specific to, to you know who I am. It's specific to you, yeah. Tim. It's something that's very life giving and fulfilling. Yeah. So um, that would be my recommendation. But what do I know? Yeah, that's a good recommendation. And you're also <laughs> fortunate to have a group of people around you that that know what they're doing and know what they're talking about. And, you know, you can ask questions <laughs> and, uh, you know, get some advice. Uh, I need help. You go. What am that's, I doing? I mean, that's honestly, that's what I attribute like any of my success to is just good people in my life that have helped me learn and grow. You know, if yeah. it was, if sure. it wasn't for them, I probably would have given up, you know? Sure. So find yourself some of those people. If you're facing something scary or uncomfortable or, something that you just don't know enough about look to your uh to your peer group to yeah. the people around you you know yeah for sure that's great so, so anyway um yeah that's... had nothing to do with uh the next conversation we're about to have but <laughs> well maybe a little bit uh but uh Par for the course. we're about to bring on um a guy named alex who plays for uh, a band silent planet you guys might have heard of them um and man, this was such a great conversation. I I, uh, I loved it. I had so much fun. And, you know, I, I remember you actually bringing Alex up in an earlier podcast episode because um, I think you were on tour with them early on when we first started this podcast or near the beginning of, of the start of this podcast. And um, I think you had talked to him about uh, Enneagrams or something. <laughs> 
Uh, like yeah. you, <laughs> you guys had that conversation. It got brought up on the co- on the podcast. Uh, I think on the podcast, maybe it was a private conversation we had. But either way, um, he's been in the back of my mind ever since you uh, brought up that conversation. Seemed like a cool guy, and uh, man, what an approachable dude! Yeah, what a down to earth, humble guy. He's um, special, and what a great conversation that you guys are about to hear yeah 100 so. it it was it was fun i'm glad we captured it i always feel that way about our our guests coming on the show it's the kind of conversation mm-hmm. we could have had off you know off the record in the bus after a show mm-hmm. and afterwards you're like man that was fun and i love that and i don't remember much of what we talked about fortunately <laughs> with the podcast you're able to change that so <laughs> yeah, and you guys all get to so be a part of it so hope you guys enjoy alex from silent planet yeah enjoy <laughs> Alex, thank you so much What's for coming up? on Holy Ghost Notes. Thanks for having me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good time, good hangs. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's good to yeah. see you. Um, what have you been up to this year? I haven't seen you in a while. Ooh, this year. Well, the beginning of this year, Silent Planet did a headliner. So, And it was, our, it was actually our biggest headliner to date, so we were pretty excited about it. Nice. Unfortunately, COVID did cut it about a week short. But we were pretty fortunate enough to get most of the tour out of the way. Um, only five shows got canceled. Oh, wow. So we we did that at the beginning of the year. And then, um, yeah, um, currently recording a new album. So nice. we're, we're about 80, 90 percent done with it. So we're pretty I'm, I haven't been this excited for Silent Planet music in quite a while. So I'm pretty excited to to put it out. And how are you recording with everything shut down the way it is? Ooh, it's been actually probably the most interesting process. Um, We've been working with Drew Folk here in L.A. And uh, yeah, it's been a really strange thing because we've been kind of using Garrett's apartment in Pasadena. Okay. It's kind of like a uh, home base. Mm -hmm. So anytime we're not in the studio working with Drew, we're at Garrett's place like continuing to work on stuff nice so we recorded vocals with at drew studio and then mitch recorded all all the guitars at garrett's house (laughs) and then (laughs) and then i'm recording all the drums at my house so it is uh it is very much a uh somewhat of a i feel like this is as close to like a diy album as like a label cd can get almost Mm. i don't know i mean that yeah, is I don't know. We, wild. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting, but it, it definitely is fun because we get to take it at our own pace. We're not in a yeah. hurry. We're yeah. not like, hey, you're at the studio for six weeks, and at the at the end of the six weeks, you have to leave. It's kind of like the studio is our own home. So yeah, we get to wake up and kind of work on the album at our own pace. So it's been really nice. Do nice. you have neighbors? I do. I have. <laughs> so I have one you neighbor did. to Past my right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. So to my left, there is no neighbors. It's okay. just like okay. nothingness. But there is one house to the right of me. Nice. But it's a very, very like elderly couple where like they if they look out their window, <laughs> there's been several times where they talk to us from their window to our backyard. And we'll just be like, hey, how's it going? And it's a lot of like, huh? <laughs> and you're like, yes. It's like, yes. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, like, hope you're having a good day. And they're all like, no, we're okay. Thank you. And it's just like, all right, yeah, they can't hear a thing. They, they are absolutely not going to be bothered by me playing some drums throughout the day. <laughs> but, uh, Maybe yeah, he was a drummer that, in, in, at some point. Yeah, he <laughs> exactly. can't hear anymore. <laughs> He's got tinnitus. But, well, the, the, the person that lives in front of us, the house in front of us, the dude is a bongo player. So really? he's the only one that's actually 
like mention something about it and it's always it's always just like yeah dude keep rocking out man it sounds good <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like all right we we got it we we found a pretty good spot so what That's kind great. of bongos you got in that house alex <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bongos are you playing <laughs> <laughs> only the sjc kind baby. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great but it, it is nice having like room to finally at the place i was before this i didn't really i wasn't really able to set up drums or play yeah so it's nice to have like my drums set up and absolutely i can actually like i i had lent out i had let a, like a lot of friends borrow a bunch of my snares just because i didn't really have anywhere to put them or like i wasn't really using them so it's nice to finally have all those back too and like kind of see yeah. all my things together again <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so uh so a lot of our listeners uh, probably know who you are, but for those of <coughs> them that don't, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe tell us something that uh, people who know you wouldn't even know. Hmm. So my name is Alex, Alex Camarena, <laughs> and I play drums for Silent Planet. Um, I've been playing drums for them since 2012. I joined the band about that time. Cool. And let's see... I'm not sure if it's a I'm not sure if it's so secret anymore but I a, a pretty fun fact is I I very very rarely listen to metal. Like over the last 4 or 5 years I've it's I probably never the only exposure to metal that I have over that time has been like when any of my bandmates show me like a new song or something hmm. or when I'm on tour like Wow. listening to the other bands live um other than that i don't really ever pull up metal or anything like thrice is about as heavy as it gets thrice yeah. and radiohead are my two favorite bands uh -huh. so that's yeah that's kind of a fun fact nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that is something i actually did know about you but it doesn't surprise me i think yeah. For those listening, if you're like, wait a second, he plays in this heavier band and he doesn't even <laughs> listen to his own music. I've always equated it to like if you're a car mechanic, you often time you often see car mechanics cars as being the 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 ones in the greatest need of repair. Or like yeah. if you're a landscaper, their grass is usually the longest. In other words, you don't really <laughs> want to take your work home with you. It's like yeah, exactly. it's taxing. It's a long day. Exactly. You're exhausted. You want to do something completely different. So mm -hmm. I, I'm exactly the same way. Tim, you're kind of the same way too. Um, yeah. Tim loves um, new country like Florida Georgia Line. and. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm not much a country guy, I'll admit, but uh, I'm a sucker for Rain Makes Corn. And, Matt uh, was just reading off of his playlist on his phone real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, like, I will say I'm not a country guy, but Luke Bryan's Rain Makes Corn song oh, yeah. is incredible. <laughs> That's good they stuff, just, man. Well, one of our listeners oh. is the drummer for Florida Georgia Line, and, and so I won't... I won't say anything he hasn't heard before, but it's not really my <laughs> cup of tea. But man, if you hear a Florida Georgia Line chorus, first of all, if you heard one, you've heard all of them. But also, <laughs> uh, but also, it is stuck There's in your a head. Low key roast in there. It is stuck in your head forever, forever. <laughs> yeah, you will yeah. never get it out. And every yeah, other that, song that's... starts to sound like that song. <laughs> I will. I will say. Country songs tend to be very the the choruses to country songs are so catchy that Man. it just kind of sticks with you for a while. Mm. Like, yeah, it's like it's like worship music. It's it all kind of sounds the same. They all kind of use the same chords. They all talk about the same things. <laughs> they all have a bridge that goes uh, that goes to nothing and then builds to yeah. a, builds to nothing and lots then comes of in nanas the and, and whoa and yeah, you know. whoa woes. <laughs> Uh, hey, we have some wobos. <laughs> yes, I'm. Wo I'm a. I'm personally a fan of the holy laughter. The ha ha. The Kim. Uh, <laughs> well, Kim Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> ha ha. Yeah. Uh, never thought about that. That's a good point. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. Man. <laughs> That's, it's funny how people yeah. adapt certain like mannerisms of like famous yeah. worship leaders and they kind of bring it into their own worship service. And it's like, kind of like, what, <laughs> what was that? Like, where did that come from? 
I think I forget who told me about um Am I correct in hearing like there's a there's there's a church that like is pretty big on like the holy laughter thing? Hmm. I had never heard of the term holy to, laughter, but, but uh, maybe like a huh. a Bethel or, I, or may, maybe I misunderstood, but I could I could have sworn somebody was telling me about a church where that's kind of like just like like a speaking in tongues is kind of like mm. a thing of like Presbyterian churches. Yeah, yeah. For this church is like holy laughter. It's all about like laughing Man, or something. I kind of I kind of like that as. If you contrast holy laughter, if the opposite of holy laughter is sad, drowning in sorrow, which is, I feel like, most of worship anyway, I'll take the holy laughter. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. life's, you know, life's tough, but when I go to church, it's like, I kind of want to escape the tough and worship God who, if you believe in the Bible and what he says about us and each other, like, we're loved even though we don't deserve it. There's a lot to celebrate there. So it's yeah. just like, man, yeah. so much of worship is so sad. It sounds sad. You could be <laughs> singing the most positive thing in the world and you feel like crying <laughs> because everything is just slide guitar and yeah. ambient pad and just like, I'll take some holy laughter. I, I, I really can't say much about that because that's the, pretty much the only kind of music I like to write and listen to. <laughs> <laughs> but I do get it. I yeah. like I completely understand. Yeah. I mean, the more the more sadness exudes from a song, the more I'm likely to like it. So uh, <laughs> I'm kind of the same way. I'm it's kind like of the that, same way. that uh, if you know if you if you uh, if you're blue, you listen to the blues to feel better, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> if I'm if I'm feeling down, I listen to sad worship music to feel better. Yeah, I that's true. That's a good what's, point. What's kind of like your your music of choice, Tim? Uh, I I try to be very. Um, I like to have a wide range in my library, but um, if I were to choose one, it'd probably be pop punk. I'm still pop punk. Still living in the early two thousands. That's you know? awesome. I love that about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and nothing nothing changed since then. Like Reliant K or Reliant K. Blink one eighty two. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So I was yeah. I was never super into I guess in high school I was I was very like metalhead like mm -hmm. um but I don't know as I got older especially once I joined Silent Planet and started touring yeah it was just like metal music left and right so I think yeah. that's when I was like yeah hey, maybe I want to listen to something when when I'm away from a show that's not <laughs> metal <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. something that doesn't have overdrive on it. <laughs> Well, if if I were to choose a style to play, if I could play it, it would probably be metal, because at least it's challenging as a drummer. Yeah, I do think it's fun to listen to at times. For yeah, sure. absolutely. If, if it's hot outside and I have the windows down and I'm driving, and I just want to blast some music. Metal is definitely the way to go. Recently, the midnight has been pretty high up for me on mm. bands. I'm pretty mm. obsessed with the midnight right now. Nice the midnight. I'll have to check yeah. them out. Yeah, I haven't really, I haven't heard much of their their stuff. It's like, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, in my head, I just think of it as like, almost like 90s synth wave. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just like, to me, it's That's perfect, cool. like late, like sunset driving music. Ooh, I think nice. it's amazing. I like <laughs> I'm that. all about it. I would like that. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm <laughs> yeah. headed to the beach tomorrow night. and I'll Oh, yeah. It's the out. perfect song, brother. Perfect okay. song. There you go. There you go. Look up Sunset by the Midnight and okay. just dance your heart away. <laughs> nice. Sunset if you're listening midnight. to this and, and you're looking for a song to to listen to, uh, hey, there you go. That's a good recommendation. Sunset I'm sure there's going to be a lot more, too. Um, so <laughs> we talked about church a little bit. I wanted to talk about this. I think it's, it's important to talk about with you because from mm -hmm. what I remember, you have a bit of history with the church. So yeah. you've played drums for Silent Planet since 2012. I looked up... I did some research and figured out, okay, how long has Alex been playing for Sound Planet? So it's been about eight years. Did you grow mm -hmm. up playing in church as a kid? And how did that transition into you being in a touring band? Yeah. So I, both of my parents are pastors, actually. So hmm. uh, one can say I was pretty much born inside the church. Um, <laughs> I was, a, yeah, at a pretty young age, my dad said I was banging pots and pans, like and so around seven years old i kind of started learning drums and he my dad was a worship pastor so he he knows how to play everything but very basic he he like doesn't get too crazy on any instrument hmm. and so he started teaching me drums and he taught me like the very basics 
And then, uh, yeah, after a couple months, I kind of just kept venturing into drums by myself. And nice. I was just, I started playing for my dad because um, he was a worship pastor at church. Uh, I started playing for him when I was like eight, around eight and a half. And then nine, I recorded an album for him. And then I've just kind of been playing at churches ever since, since <laughs> I was nine. <laughs> Dang. Um, so I, I knew I wanted to do music and I knew I wanted to tour. Yeah. Um, I had always listened to metal music, but I had never been in a metal band. Okay. Um, there was really never in high school. I was in a ska band. Um, nice. But there really was no <laughs> like local bands that were like that I was like stoked about, you know? Yeah. So I was never in um, in any bands. But what's funny is growing up, uh, I went to a couple ABR shows at the Showcase Theater in Corona. Is that right? Really? In Corona, so California. I, I, re- I remember seeing you with a broken leg there mm-hmm. playing. And I was like, this dude is freaking insane. <laughs> 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 playing with a broke. I, I literally thought to myself, like years down the road, I injured my knee. And I remember thinking like, ah, I'll be fine. If Mac Reiner can play with a broken leg, I can play with a busted up knee. Like, And it, for sure, I just like would get on stage on crutches, play, and then get off on crutches. And Man, I was it's like, so cool. weird, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> how am I going to be able to do this? There's no way. But there's something about yeah. being able to, there's something the about playing drums. It's it's first of all the adrenaline, but there's also not as much uh, large muscle movement as you think. It's it's a lot of small yeah. compound movements. Um, yeah. We we think of it in terms of like throwing a football or in terms of like swinging a, a bat, but it, it's it's not like that. Especially someone yeah. like you who grew up in church and has really proper technique and tons of wrist movement and just like every hit has a purpose and mm-hmm. every swing has like limited movement with control and if you're mm. able to play like that you don't really need those those big muscle groups um yeah i, I, I was I yeah luckily it was my left knee so it's my hi-hat foot. Okay. And at the time i wasn't playing any metal so i was just like either my hi-hat's open or it's closed so i'm good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> either i pick it up and put it on the hi-hat or i pick it up and take it off the hi-hat so <laughs> yeah so i was pretty fortunate in that sense so <laughs> but yeah. i was playing at church pretty that's, much that's funny Pretty much up until 2012. And what was crazy is even in 2012, I had spent that whole year telling myself, I had made like a plan to myself. If I didn't, I wanted to do music so badly, but I just, I wanted to be something more than just like the kid who's just playing at churches all the time. Um, And so I had, I told myself I would dedicate 2012 to doing that, to pursuing music like not being just a, you know, weekend drummer type of thing. Mm. And most of 2012 came and went and nothing changed. Wow. (laughs) Mm. So around October, I pretty much had told myself like, cool, like this isn't working out. I cut my, I had super long hair. I cut it. I got an office job and wow. I pretty much told myself the month of October, I was going to like kind of take a break on life and just kind of rewire my, like myself mentally to get ready to like spend life doing, you know, I don't know, an office job or whatever, Mm. but something not music. And, uh, almost all of October went by and towards the end of October, a friend of mine, um, Brandon Trahan from impending doom, actually, Mm -hmm. um, we were very close and he invited me to a show. Um, I believe they were, they were on the unshakable tour. So it Mm -hmm. was like four today, them the chariot i believe i forget who Mm -hmm. else was on the tour um but it was a rad tour and he asked me to go and just hang out with him and like just kind of hang out and watch the show so in my head i was like cool this will be like my last music venture i'll just go hang out with a bunch of friends and then you know go start my life as a test proctor (laughs) at an (laughs) office somewhere (laughs) (laughs) and uh yeah i ended up enjoying the night and i ended up meeting um this man named Mark there who um, is pretty widely known. He's an older dude. He's done merch for a lot of people. I don't know if you guys have met him. Hmm. Um, has a really long beard. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I know Mark. But yeah. That was a giveaway. Yeah, he, yeah he's an <laughs> incredible person. I had met him that day and he was like, hey, Brandon says you're a good drummer. I just met you, so I'm going to kind of take his word for it. There's a band here that is looking for a drummer really badly like you should meet them 
He's like, I hope you're good at drums because I'm just going to recommend you to them. But you should definitely like talk to them. And I ended up meeting Garrett, um, which at the time he was wearing like a he was wearing like a cutoff. He was like barefoot wearing shorts. <laughs> Uh, that's Garrett today. So, that's yeah, that's still yeah, Garrett. yeah. That's like still n- hasn't changed one <laughs> yeah. one bit. So I remember seeing him oh, and we talked cool. for a bit. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna go get an EP so you can listen to it. Like, I'll be back." And he left. And I remember looking at Brandon, being like, "Is this a joke? Like that dude just kind of looks like a homeless guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, is this Silent Planet band like really a band or whatever?" And he was like, "No, they're they're really good." He uh, Brandon was gonna record their stuff, but some stuff came up. Uh, their EP at the time, but like some, I think, I don't know what happened, but he didn't end up doing it. So I was just like, all right, well, they have Brandon's recommendation. I'll give it a listen. And sure enough, I listened to it on my way home. And the next day I was like, hey, we like, I'd be interested for sure. Like we should jam sometime. And the rest was history. Wow. <laughs> nice. Man. We joke around because cool I never, story. I never, we never had an official like Alex is in the band yeah. moment. <laughs> it was just kind of like I started hanging out and then one day I just kind of moved in and then one day it was like I played a show and then one day I was touring and there was never like a moment of like hey Alex like you're in yeah. the band or Alex do you want to be in the band it was just kind of right. like I showed up hung out mm-hmm. and then it was like oh yeah we're getting signed do you want to sign this you're in the band and I'm like oh okay <laughs> yeah sure. <laughs> I love that so, yeah that's kind of haven't looked back since then that's awesome <laughs> that's really cool so uh, yeah. we kind of touched on this a little bit uh in this podcast we've talked a lot about the difference between playing drums in church and playing as a touring musician um how would you say that these differ in in your experience Ooh. um well for one thing you don't got to load in and load out every day. <laughs> but I, um, if anything, I will say I'm I'm incredibly thankful for, for playing at church for so long because especially the church I grew up in, the music was very, um, was very all over the place. So it really allowed me to like grow, like not just grow in a specific genre. I was like able to like work all like mm-hmm. every feel like just kind of like if it was a rock song if it was a country song if it was like a hip hop song that was going on like um everybody there was incredible musicians i was by far the weak link mm. <laughs> so it was like one of those things where it's like i would go there as you know 13 14 year old and just try and soak in everything mm. we could like and every weekend before any service they would have about 5 minutes of just an instrumental jam nice so a lot a lot of the times it was either we would just kind of come up with it on the spot or like he'd send like a mute math song and be like hey let's recreate just this like this will be the vibe for 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 pre for the pre-service jam or whatever so so yeah it was honestly sometimes we would do like fusion jazz we we would do all kinds of music so it was I feel like that helped me quite a bit, like, oh, yeah. stay well-rounded. Um, yeah. Was that your dad's so, church, or was that another church? It was, so he was a, my dad and his brother, um, and there was one other family. There was three okay. families, my family being one that started the Spanish ministry at that church. Hmm. Um, but we were, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we were there forever. We, we they, they, My parents started the Spanish ministry there when that church like moved to its current property in like 1994. Okay. Okay. So like the Spanish service that's still going on there. My parents aren't working there now, but um, yeah, I mean the Spanish service was all pretty much started by them and my uncle back in the day. Were you? And it's, I mean, it's a big church. The Spanish yeah, was service was say. about three to 500 people. Oh and then my once gosh. I, once I started playing for the like main Sunday services, that was like around 3000 people. Okay. That's wow. a big church. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a big church. I was going to ask how big it was. Tim and I grew up in the same church. It was about 100 people. <laughs> so, yeah, I grew up in this church, much, so that's kind of that's pretty much all I knew up until around the time I joined Silent Planet that's okay. when I left that church. Hmm. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. from there I went to Saddleback, which is even bigger so <laughs> i was yeah doing a huge. <laughs> 16 easter service was quite insane 
60 or 16? 16. 16. Okay. In a weekend. Yeah. 60 That's would. Insane. Yeah. I, I, 60 would be absolutely wild. <laughs> <laughs> 16 is like pretty that. wild. Yeah. yeah. 16 yeah. is pretty insane as well. So. Yeah. It's like we just need to rent a stadium and just do two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they. I I believe at one point they did that in Anaheim Stadium. So, wow. okay. I believe I was on tour or something, but it was like, oh, you know, Man. doing wow. a service at Anaheim Stadium, and it's like, all right, wow, that's wild. <laughs> all right, that is wild. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. So, I was doing research yesterday, like I said, and I I figured something out I didn't know about you guys about Silent Planet. Yeah. So. The name Silent Planet is derived from the C.S. Lewis fiction novel Out of the yes, Silent sir. Planet. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. That's pretty cool. I, uh, C.S. Lewis is, is um, I really like C.S. Lewis. I really like reading his, his books and uh, studying his life. And um, I don't know. I just really look up to him. And there's a, a pastor named Timothy Keller, Dr. Timothy Keller, that I look up to, who's I sort of equate with the C.S. Lewis of today. And so that really caught my attention and I started to think about it. Um, I've always had the feeling with you guys with Silent Planet that there's there's a there is an importance you guys value the music obviously and the performance and your relationship with each other, but there's something deeper going on. What what importance is there to you that Silent Planet is more than just a band that writes and performs music? Do you think there's a responsibility as individuals or just as a band to, to preach or to teach or to show a deeper message uh, than just getting up on stage and, you know, just knocking out another show? Yeah. Um, I think we... I'll answer that for myself because I know for me personally, um, I don't think I'm like a... I think my... <laughs> sorry. I don't think I'm a very smart person. So I think, I don't know. I feel like I was called in this life to just love on people and like help any way I can. Um, that's so kind of a very smart person. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, that's kind of how I view this. That's, that's kind of how I, my ultimate goal in Silent Planet is to like, as long as I can inspire somebody in any way, and like help or like show people like you're not alone, like you're you're loved. Like that's my ultimate goal with S Silent Planet. Just because there there is other uh, uh, there is other things. Like obviously, I I feel like we talk about pretty important things. Like we're we're not really ones to like to talk about an ex girlfriend or a broken heart. <laughs> like we we typically like to talk about pretty serious things. Like our first album, we had a, it was. The Night God Slept was basically a lot of um, kind of like historical stories of like martyrs. Like we always mm -hmm. hear history being told from like the winner's perspective, but we never hear it from like the losers or like there's always little stories here and there that we miss that are pretty big. So that was kind of like our vision with The Night God Slept. Um, just kind of like tell these stories, incredible stories from history that aren't really known Um and then everything was sound was really focused on kind of like a kind of mental health. Like every every song was kind of like a different mental health, tackled a different mental health issue or some sort of issue. Um, so that was kind of like what that album was about. And then um, I feel like when the end began, I, I love the album, but I... I feel like me personally, I kind of lost a little bit of vision in when the end began. And with this new album, we're all incredibly stoked because we're kind of we're kind of changing things up a little bit. It's not. We've always been like from what like telling other people's stories, how like like they, they commune like it. Garrett, like obviously Garrett talks to a lot of people, so he hears a lot of people's stories. And mm -hmm. a lot of times, sometimes that's an inspiration to our songs. Mm -hmm. But this time. This album is very much um, personal. Like, hmm. it's very much our like our feelings, like what we've been through, like 
um, kind of with everything going around, like with what just kind of recent happened, what, blah, 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 <laughs> what just recently happened in like uh, Europe, dropping off the tour over there and like Garrett going to like a mental hospital. Like it's just kind of like this album very much portrays like life within the last year and like kind of it's I feel like it's a lot darker and maybe a little bit heavier, mm-hmm. but um, we definitely are much happier and like we definitely want to make sure there's some sort of hope in there because we it's although like the past year has been kind of crazy i feel for us we're all in a much better place and like we're very hopeful and it's like everything's going very well so Hmm. if anything my goal in music is to kind of just inspire people and show them like hey there's hope man like you're not alone like there's people there's people here with you like so that's kind of my awesome, goal with man. music all the time. So as That's long great. as I can accomplish that goal, I, I'll be, I'll be stoked. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great goal. I yeah. love that answer. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, do you have yeah. Hebrew on your knuckles, by the way? I have on my hand. Oh, actually. on your hand. Yeah. What does that say? <laughs> yeah. That was my first tattoo. Actually, I got it when I was eighteen. I love it that. Says, uh, it says Yahweh. It's. I love yeah. it. That should be <laughs> the uh, cover image for this podcast. That, that right there. <laughs> send, send a high res photo of your hand. High res photo of your hand. Of my hand, like that. That's the cover. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, so I guess I have a question. This wasn't planned, but uh, based on your answer, so you you wanna you wanna spread love and spread hope. Uh, you have Yahweh on your hand. What is what does hope mean to you? What does hope look like for you? Ooh, that's a great question. My God. Um, (laughs) I think hope to me is, uh, at least to me personally, hope, oh man, it's so hard to describe. It's quite the opposite of like, to me, having hope is the opposite of just being sulking around like, hmm laying laying in your bed all day absolutely unmotivated like uninspired that to mm-hmm. me is like very unhopeful mm-hmm. and to me when you have hope i feel like i don't know maybe that stuff doesn't happen i i really don't know that's a really hard yeah. question <laughs> well where, where where do you pull where do you pull your hope like you're you you come across as a hopeful person, a joyful person, yeah. you know, someone who cares about people and, and wants to spread that uh, that love and that hope. And if I were to ask you, like, how do I how do I have what you have? Yeah, you know, where yeah. where are you pulling that from? I think a good start is uh, just kind of being thankful for what I have. Honestly, like mm-hmm. um, being fortunate enough to um, travel a lot. I've We've done some like international stuff and uh, even outside of touring, I've like traveled and done like a couple missions trip to like some third world countries. And Hmm. even that in itself is enough to be like, wow, I've been complaining about the wrong things. (laughs) Yeah, man. So I feel like perspective, uh, right? Yeah. So that in itself is kind of like I'd like to think I I mean, I like to think I'm pretty, you know, positive, mental, see the glass half full kind of guy. Um, so a lot of times when I do kind of get into that negative, you know, hopeless kind of zone is when I, a big thing, I, I I just kind of start thinking of the things I'm thankful for. I like, Mm. I'll kind of say aloud, like, Ooh, I'm thankful for a roof over my head. I'm thankful to have Mm. like, a a, you know, room to be able to do some music, a spot to be Mm. able to sit down and just write some music. Um, you know, I'm thankful to be living in California sunny sunny california you know any honestly any little thing i'm thankful to Mm -hmm. wake up another day Mm -hmm. (laughs) thankful to live with awesome roommates you know um i feel like just kind of having a like a attitude of like thankfulness kind of could help that quite Mm -hmm. a bit at Mm -hmm. least for me it 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 helps me a lot i'll say that um that and obviously like having friends that you can that you pretty much trust and unequivocally and can go to for anything um i think that's a big part because uh i have a very hard time like opening up to people like 
like talking about problems or if I'm feeling down or anything like that. But I do have a very few select amount of friends where they definitely make me feel like I can open up whenever if I'm having a bad day. Yeah. Like it's never a problem. I'm very I'm actually very, very close to my sister as well. So mm-hmm. it's been nice to like if like I'm freaking out or something, I FaceTime her and talk to her. She calms me down a bit or like she'll put on my niece mm-hmm. on FaceTime and my niece. I don't think it's possible to be uh-huh. sad or, or bummed yeah. out when you're talking to my niece. So yeah. she's just a wildfire, that one. Like, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, that's what friends and family are there for. They're, I like, love that. You lean on them. Like hmm. they're, they would, I'd be willing to bet they're more than happy to, to share the load, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. On a um, on a recent tour, this was probably two years ago. You don't remember because you were actually playing at the time. But uh, I was backstage with Adam Gray, mm-hmm. and he's like, he's like, "What do you want to do?" Or more so, he's like, "What the hell you want to do?" You know? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "Sounds about right." Something to that effect. <laughs> Or it was probably like it was probably like the hell you want to do. There was no yeah. what. Yeah, like it was, it was a it was a what the hell you want to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So well, actually, he quit smoking. I love that man. Oh, he, did he? He quit smoking. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he quit smoking. It is awesome. I'm really proud of him. So we were backstage. The hell you want to do? I was like, let's go watch Silent Planet. He's like, and I was I was fully prepared for like. Hell no. Like, I want to go outside and walk around and just do something. And he's like, absolutely. So we walked out and watched your show. And afterwards, I was talking to Adam and I said, being in a metal band means you don't often get to hear gospel chops. Being on tour with Silent Planet means that you do. And he kind of laughed. He, he kind of laughed. He's like, you're right. Like, that's, I love Alex. Like, I, I, I really like his drumming. It's different. And it's, it's different. One, it's different. And two, it's, it's really good. It's really well done. So I want you to talk a little bit about the groove and the, the pocket. And um, for those that, that don't know that much about drumming, um, may, maybe you can speak to that, to the groove and to the pocket and what that might mean um, if you're standing in the audience, is that something you can you can tell is happening or not happening? And how have you been able to find it and implement it into the band? Yeah, well, that's actually quite funny because I feel like I get asked quite a bit if Silent Planet influences my plane when I'm home. And I have always found that kind of funny because it's quite the opposite. Like all, all the playing that I that I have done at churches and like the fusion jazz and whatever genre I've played, that all ends up pretty heavily influencing drums on Silent Planet. Um, I really wouldn't consider myself a metal drummer at all. (laughs) In (laughs) fact, like recording this album, I've kind of written drum parts to have less double kick, but I've noticed that I'm recording the double kick parts last. And since (laughs) I haven't touched a double pedal since our last tour. So... (laughs) I like started tracking it and I was like, oh boy, like, <laughs> can you guys give me like an hour of just yeah. kind of practicing by myself to get up to speed again? Cause this is a little rough, yeah. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, the, when I started playing at that church, um, the music director's name was Charles Rumali Wang and he was a, a, he played bass and piano and he's, He's just one of those musicians when you're like, what, how are you this good? Like, I don't understand it. So he was kind of my mentor, basically, when I turned 12, 13, up until I left that church. And he was mm-hmm. very much a big proponent on, um, I don't want you to really have crazy chops. I don't really care about chops. I want you to focus on the feel and like the, just stay in the pocket. If, if you can play a beat if you can just play do da do da do and it sounds just so good and it feels good then that's all you need like he he kind of like advised me like 
staying away from like music schools because he was like, mm. you have the feel. You just got to practice staying in the pocket, mm. you know, practice your timing. And mm. that's all he made me focus on for those 10 years that I was kind of wow. playing for him was like a lot of times it was like, all right, we're playing this song. I don't want you to do any fills on toms. Keep this on snare. And uh, yeah, I want to feel the pocket. And Seriously? It was kind of like that. that. Yeah. Yeah, wow. like he would just kind of like, all right, play the song. I don't want, I don't really want any fills. Um, wow. I love I that. I just want you to man. focus on like the pocket and making sure that the most simplest beat can just sound really good. Right. And uh, I've kind of taken that and ran with it, honestly. I, I, I mean, I, I don't think I'm very like flashy or gospel chops, but I do focus quite a bit on making sure whatever beat I'm playing is just feels good and i love that aaron aaron sterling aaron sterling is one of my all-time favorite drummers um mm. and i love that so much because most of his instagram posts are just him playing the simplest of beats but mm. you hear it and you're just like oh my god it sounds so good and he's so like just deep in the pocket that it's like just him yeah. playing drums by the himself just to me is so entertaining. Who does he play I, for? I love that. Who does Aaron play for? Oh, for everybody. I think um his most recently, he's been playing for John Mayer quite a bit recently. Mm. Um, recording yeah. his last couple records and playing live with him. Jeez. Um, I know he does like T Swift. Um yep. I he does like everybody, man. <laughs> wow. Awesome. He's insane. Yeah. I I I I value like he I think he's a very creative person um, on his Instagram. Like, for example, he was talking about rec tracking drums for an album for a Gunger album. And there was a specific snare tone that he couldn't quite find and he couldn't quite get. And he loves to like experiment with stuff. So he just went to Home Depot or Lowe's. He bought a big sheet of like metal. And just like hung it in his room and just hit that with a stick. And that ended up being the snare for that song. It's just like what? this giant sheet of metal. And like there's Jeez. another song where he just filled up like a plastic box full of shakers and like tambos. And he would just like kind of lift it to make everything <laughs> fall in it. And that was the snare for that song. Like it sounded wow. so cool. Like and I I love that. I think that's Man, incredible. Like that if, is incredible. If you can, if you can play if you can write a drum beat that most that I don't know, I when I look at like music, I try and write a drum beat like obviously here, like the drum beat that should probably go over it. The most basic drum beat that could yeah. probably go over. it. Yeah. And then to me, I try and do things that one wouldn't really. I don't know, like I would have never guessed to do a beat like that for this song type of thing. Um, and I feel like he does that very well. Like, and mm. a lot of things that he does, I'm like, I would have never thought to do that. And that sounds incredible. That's <laughs> like, I value creativity so much more than crazy chops. So he's pretty, he's a, he's a pretty big example of that for me. So. Do you think you can send him a text after this and see if he'll come on our podcast? <laughs> 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 I'll send him a. <laughs> I if I had his number, that'd be sick. But I unfortunately I do not know the man. He'd probably just think I'm some weird fanboy. <laughs> I'd I'll I'll hit him up on Instagram. And be like, hey, there you go, big fan. Yeah. My friend Matt Griner and Tim yeah, have a right. cool podcast. You should go <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like okay man all right. <laughs> yeah exactly it's one of those like all right cool it's, it <laughs> so you hit on something interesting uh i was just thinking about this the other day which is why it kind of rung true for me like wh like we we kind of asked you a really tough question like how do you even describe pocket and groove yeah. and i was thinking a lot about this myself like, so do you know, like when you're listening, listening to something like so, listening to someone talk and you're not actually looking at them, you don't actually see their face, yeah. but you can kind of tell like when they're smiling or exactly. like when they're like about to laugh, it yeah. kind of comes through. That is like the best way that at least to this day, I've been able to describe to myself what like groove means. Hmm. Like when you're playing on the drums, you could play that same beat. You just said dudes, pats, dudes, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and if the person is like 
the person playing it isn't like into it. It comes through, you know, it's yeah. just like real boring and they're just playing the notes and that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But like groove is like when you're, when you can kind of hear that smile, you can kind of hear that pre laugh yeah. start to come through. <laughs> like you, there's that little bit of extra something that that person is bringing and, and everyone's got their own form of it. You know, groove for one person isn't going to sound exactly the same as groove for another. Like Aaron's yeah. groove is not going to sound like Ash Stone's groove. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. You know, same with Matt. I mean, Matt's a metal drummer. You're, you're, well, you you are a metal drummer technically. <laughs> Tec- <yeah. laughs> you know, but you have two different versions of it. And that's yeah. why, and that's what sets you both apart, you know, in your own yeah. ways. Um, and I think, I don't know where I'm really going with this, but yeah. uh, I, I think you almost have to like think about it that way. It's like, I like that, that Tim. smile that you kind of cool. hear. I think yeah, that I, is I relate well it, explained. I also relate it pretty close to like, I, I, I grew up, I'm self-taught. I'm 100% self-taught. So mm. I didn't really grow up like, I, I, I took drum lessons for one month. And it was the the my dad's old drummer that was playing for him. And in that one month, the only thing he taught me was how to get a, like a, a rim shot a rim pretty shot. much every snare hit. Mm. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That was the only thing I learned in that month. But it was like a pretty important <laughs> thing for my dad. So he's like, I want you to take lessons for him. Teach him how to do a rim shot every hit. You know? Really? So it's like, yeah, so that, yeah, so that was kind of like all I learned from that guy. And then... Yeah. Um, once I got it, like just a, after I got lessons for him, shortly after that, the the drummer stopped playing for my dad and then I started playing for him. And pretty much besides that one month, I've been self-taught. And the best way I could describe it is <laughs> everything to me is just kind of like, I don't really know how to explain it. I just know how to kind of do it. Like, for example, yeah. David Puckett is a really close friend of mine. He used to play for Four Today, is now playing for We Came As Romans. He, we toured a lot together, and he's very much like his parents are very musical, and he grew up very technically like learning drums, where mm-hmm. I I feel like that's a pretty great example of if you ask me and him, if you ask both of us, how do you do a ghost note? To me, I'm like, I don't know, just hit the snare softer, <laughs> like, <laughs> like barely hit the snare. Whereas yeah. like David could probably break it down. Like you yeah. want to not use these muscles. You want to try and use more of these muscles and that'll create more of the ghost note. Yeah, exactly. Thing yeah. You want. Right. And to me, it's just like, bro, just hit it and soft. Do it. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> Somebody recently was just like, how do you, how did you get like faster on, on like, how did you work on your kick to get so fast? And it's like, I didn't. I I don't know. I just hit it fast and it happens. I really <laughs> yeah. don't know how to I really don't know how to explain it. Like I just kind of yeah. yeah. hit the drum yeah. and it does I maybe years of just not knowing what I'm doing and trying to get the drum to do what I wanted to do kind of taught me that, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really have a that that's why I kind of feel like I'm an I I don't feel comfortable <laughs> teaching just because I I'm self-taught so I don't know how to explain things very well on Yeah, drums. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same same way for I me. I know how it works and I know how to do it, but I don't know how to explain doing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, well that makes man, that would make you such a good teacher. It's it's sort of like <laughs> when you meet someone who is um a Christian and you talk to them about their faith and it's it's hard for them to talk about because it's so deeply personal to them. There's nothing yeah. there's nothing easy to understand about it. It's sort of like they're yeah. they're they're figuring it out and there's no template for it. It just is like I I can't believe this is the case, but God loves me and he knows me and I can't believe those two things can coexist. You yeah. look at that person and you say, "Man, like you're someone I admire." The same way when you talk about teaching, it's like I I don't know. Like you, you just hit it softer. It's like, okay, I think I can learn from you because there, <laughs> there isn't, there isn't all of this fluff. Adam Gray is a perfect, perfect person to talk to about this. If you've seen his last Instagram post a couple days ago, it's like him mimicking, mocking, essentially me. He's essentially mocking me without saying it. Cause he's like, all right, I'm going to teach some drum lessons, which he knows I do. And he's yeah. like, so I want you to uh, play this for me. 
and the guy, his alter ego, whose name is Gus, got like this beanie on. <laughs> oh, and yeah. And he's just like, yes. teacher's like, all right, just play this. And the drummer's like, all right, all right, all right. He's like, <laughs> and Gus looks at him, the teacher looks at him, he's like, okay, yeah, well, We'll get to that eventually. Um, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, like, that's it. I mean, when you yeah. compress teaching into a little square, that's what you get. I told you to play yeah. it this way, and you could care, couldn't care any less. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I really like that about you. I think I could learn something from you about that. Oftentimes, we just we we make things more complex, uh, more complex than they need to be, and we can we can just dial it down and say, listen, I, I'm pretty much self taught too. Same as you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I, I took yeah. a couple of weeks of lessons, honestly hated them. Um, didn't didn't really learn what I wanted to learn, which was blast beats yeah. and double bass. So how do you <laughs> teach effectively? <laughs> yeah, it's like uh well yeah. how do you play blast yeah. beats? Same thing. Like you just yeah. take a single stroke it, roll and play really fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, if anything, I feel like when I was teaching, or if I ever do teach in the future, it was it'll be more of like okay, like, if you kind of come with some sort of idea of, like, I want Alex to teach me this song, or I want Alex to teach me, you know, how to play salsa, or how to, you know, how to play this Silent Planet fill, like, absolutely, I can 100% teach you and, like, break down a song for you, like, teach you how to play it. But, like, when it came down to, like, just having, like, a curriculum and... Mm -hmm all that kind of stuff, like a plan of what I was going to teach from like a beginner. It's like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, I don't know how to do that. Okay. <laughs> I have an idea. I think, I think to, yeah, I think to Matt's point, and it's funny because when he was going into the Christian analogy, I thought he was going to go the opposite direction uh -huh. and say like Christians who grew up in the church and stuff have this language we call Christianese. And so if someone was like, well, what does it mean to be a Christian? Well, it means to be washed by the blood of the lamb, you know, like, and like, what the heck does that mean? So I feel like you almost have the advantage because there's going to be drummers that are like, how do I do this? And, uh, and you know, you can just say, well, you just hit it a little bit softer. That's, true. you know, whereas That's Matt true. would say, this is, this is, you know, you need to be three inches up from the, <laughs> from the snare. That's All right, Adam you know, Gray. I got it. I got it. I got it, man. You know, so I think there's, there's people, I think what you have to realize is that there's people who might learn better from mm. your method of teaching yeah. than from the super technical, yeah. like what, that, because that, that, for me, that would be intimidating. Like three inches? How in, how in the world do I measure that? I just want to <laughs> hit the drum. Yeah. Like I'm playing drums because I want to play. Yeah. I don't want to like think about it. I want to play. Um, so that's, that's yeah. a good yeah. point. Yeah. I think there's validity. I, I think two things can be true at the same time. I think, I think both methods can work. I, I just, was saying I really respect when I see someone like you who isn't just full of it. You're not just, you're not full of it. You can tell you're not full of it because you're like, I don't really know. I just hit it soft. So I, I, here, here's I just a bang litmus on things, test. Brother, I don't know. I'm coming up. I'm currently running a double bass course. It's going to be 10 days okay. to better double bass. And when I'm done with it, I'm going to send it to you, Alex. And I want I you, I want you to look at it and go through it, start to finish. And if at the end you're like, I'm worse at double bass, then we know that your method's <laughs> right. It's just like to play double bass, you have to just play each foot together. Like, you know, just do a roll with your feet. Yeah. It's pretty simple. But yeah. if my method yeah. works, then okay, maybe we can call Adam Gray and tell him he sucks at life. <laughs> yeah, be like, hey, <laughs> go screw yourself, brother. <laughs> brother. Hey, Adam, go to hell, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be like, I'm already there, brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll see you soon, brother. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'll see you here want, soon. Want to come with? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty nice what's here. Funny is, what's funny uh, is, funny. Um, as soon as I moved into this house, I had a... <laughs> they were showing me the garage where like some of the drum sets are set up and I um I don't know if I'm even allowed to tell you this but Anthony's kind of working on an ABR drum playthrough that he's going to be doing like a drum cover soon and as soon as I saw his drum set I was like what Matt Griner's practicing here or what <laughs> <laughs> and, but that, that was before he had told me I'm doing an ABR like That's cover amazing. I just walked in saw his drum set I was like hey where's Matt Griner hanging out at and he was just like Oh God! He's like, I'm doing an ABR cover. I was like, 
That's even more funny. <laughs> I was like, I love that I chose his name for the drum set as you're doing an AVR exactly cover. Like, I was <laughs> like, I love it. <laughs> How many Chinas do you need? Uh, that's funny. China. So so we have China. we have two more and then we have a couple guests. Um we just have like one or two guest questions for you. Uh, dude, thank you so yeah. much for your time. This has been <laughs> it's been just a fun conversation. Uh, I knew it would be your <laughs> fun guy. For me, man. <laughs> um, so my final question, and then and then Tim has has one. Tim, if you feel like asking another one, um, yeah, yeah, extrovert or introvert? There are those listening who are one or the other, and maybe a little bit of both. Um, how how does your personality jive with your profession as a touring drummer? And what do you have to say to those listening who maybe struggle with? the fact that their personality is um, in direct competition with what their job requires of them. I say that because yeah. I, I am becoming an introvert the older I get. Um, and it's, I enjoy playing shows, but it's not, I, I don't like being in the, the spotlight all that much. It's, I don't thrive in it. It doesn't give me life. It's not like, yes, this is where I need to be. I feel alive, you know? <laughs> so what do you have to say yeah. to those people who, who might be called to something that just feels scary? It's funny you say that because I, I absolutely, it's, I have this strange thing where I hate being on stage unless I have mm -hmm. the comfort or like, I guess, lack of a better word, the protection of an instrument in front yeah. of me. I, yeah. I don't know what it is about it. Like if I'm just on stage, like, I, I just don't like being in front of people unless I have like a drum set or a bass in my hands. Like, yeah, <laughs> I maybe that distracts me. I, I have I really have no idea. Um, yeah, but I am freaking a million percent introvert, man. It's kind of painful sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm I'm pretty so I can be pretty extroverted with very close friends like. Like I, m me and you have talked quite a bit, Matt, like yeah. we've toured together a couple of times already. So like, I, I feel like I'm pretty close to you. We've talked about life quite a bit. Yeah. T Tim, I just met you, but <laughs> Matt, Matt is a good friend of mine and yeah. he vouches for you. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, right. I trust Matt. So if he yeah. vouches for you, you know, I vouch for you. You're in, um, Tim. But it's You're like, in. yeah, it's, it's like, I'm in. <laughs> besides those, like ver a very few like friends that I'm close to. I'm a very quiet dude. Um, and even like my band can attest to that. Like hmm. being like being on tour with me, I'm I'm pretty quiet. Like I, I don't I every once in a while I'll talk quite a bit and like I'll join in in a conversation. But for the most part, I'm pretty quiet. <laughs> and uh, which uh, combined with my uh, resting bitch face, it doesn't do very, very good things. <laughs> A lot of people oftentimes think I'm angry or like having a bad day, but it's like, oh no, I'm just kind of hanging out. I, it's just my face kind of naturally stays like that. I promise I'm not mad. <laughs> we all suffer a little bit from RBF. It's okay. Yeah. So I, I, it happens to me a lot and, uh, I, I hope people don't think I'm angry or anything. It's just kind of the way my face sits. And I'm, my face. I'm typically very quiet, but it's not, I promise I'm not angry or anything. I'm just kind of chilling. I'm, I'm very yeah. much, uh, oh yeah. Alex is just hanging out. I like to, you know, I'm hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I will say a big thing that helped was pretty early on in like the silent planet touring. I was trying to like be out at the merch table quite a bit just to help the band and, you know, try and sell merch. Honestly, we're trying to make a living, you know, the grind. And uh, mm. so a big part of it was one of us had to do merch. We didn't have a merch person at the time. So, um, a lot of the times we would take turns, but sometimes I wouldn't mind kind of taking over for a whole night. And it was one of those things where it would force me to be extroverted. Like it forced yeah. me to engage with people and like, Hey, how's it going? Like, hope you're having a good day type of thing. Um, but I, I would notice that after those days I would be exhausted, exhausted. Like mm. I would go to yeah. the van and I'm like, bye. And I would just go to my bunk and just like put on music and just be by myself for like, yeah chilling by myself for two three hours before like i fell asleep or something like yeah i feel like to me anytime i have like a, a a day of like being extrovert or being very talkative typically i'm gonna 
go home and want to be by myself or just like be pretty quiet for a while because yeah uh, that typically being so like extroverted at least to me takes a lot out of me if i'm like around strangers Mm -hmm. just because i'm not typically i'm just not that talkative really (laughs) yeah well man on this podcast uh yeah (laughs) you're doing a great job man and you're gonna sleep well tonight you're gonna You're sleep like really talking well. Talking my ear off, geez, stop no. talking. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I really appreciate what you have to say. It's it's cool to hear from someone who's yeah. an introvert and and so introverted. And you're right. I mean, on on tour, you're you're very easy to be around. I find that yeah. with people who don't feel like they have to be the loudest voice in the room and don't love the sound of their own voice. They're just they're just pleasant people. And um, <laughs> yeah. I think if if you're introverted and you're listening to this and you're you, you feel uncomfortable in your own skin or you struggle with that, just take take pride in the fact that you're not taking up all the space in the room. You're not take, you're yeah. not contributing mm-hmm. all this noise. And then if you're extroverted, um, maybe sometimes it's a good thing to take notes from someone who who isn't always full throttle in the mix, you know, um, always having something to say because I, I yeah. think we can learn from each other. For I will sure. say as well, it be, being an intro, I feel like a very big, very big um, thing for me was kind of recognizing when I needed to recharge and like not feeling bad about needing to like be by myself to kind of recharge myself. Like that's just mm-hmm. kind of how it is sometimes. Like it, I feel like um, extroverts kind of recharge their batteries by being like in a group with people and like kind of being in a crowd and Whereas I like recharge my batteries being alone. Like I'll go out and like hang out and that's yeah. kind of like slowly depletes my batteries till yeah. like, I, I feel like that's very important to know and not feel bad about like, right. That's just, you just need a recharge and you need a little break. Like that's nothing to be bummed about or sad about. I feel like if mm-hmm. you can understand that pretty early on. Yeah. At least that I feel like that helped me quite a bit. Like yeah. not feeling bad about yeah. it. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So I have uh, I have one last question for you, and then we'll just jump into um, a few of our uh, patron questions yeah. um, that they sent in for you. Um, so my question is, uh, we you know we have a lot of um, young drummers or or older drummers who just started playing. Uh, a couple actually reached out saying that this podcast inspired them to start playing drums or to pick the sticks back up. Uh, you know, what is something? that you think any aspiring drummer should know as they begin their drum mm. journey, so to speak? What What's something that has helped you maybe more or a little bit more than some of the other things? What's one thing mm. you could recommend? I'm trying to think. Um, honestly, one thing that I that I didn't really think about until I was much older and I'm very thankful is when I started on drums, my dad started me on click very early. Hmm. Um, so pretty much as soon as I began playing, click was just a, another instrument to me. Like um, hmm. uh, to the point where like I, I definitely feel comfortable playing without it. Um, but if it's I feel like I've met some drummers that you introduce a click and then it's over. Like it's kind of mm-hmm. like everything kind of goes out the window. Um, yeah. And I think that's very important to not happen. <laughs> so I think the faster you can get used to a click and just to me, a click, I, I've kind of learned to just tune it out. Honestly, yeah. it's very the click and mm-hmm. drums are very loud in my mix on purpose. And honestly, even as loud as it is, there's so many times where I honestly tune it out to the point where I, I just don't hear it. Um, I can be playing a song and I kind of tune in and out of it. I'll like listen for the click. I'm like, cool. We're still, everything's good. Like we're still rolling and then (laughs) just kind of tune out again. Yeah. (laughs) Like I do that too. It's a little scary. Yeah. So, um, yeah, (laughs) it's a little, it's like, it's almost like when, did my click go out? Oh, it's still there. It's yeah. (laughs) It's like when you're driving home from somewhere and you got, you got home late at night, you know, the classic, you look back, you're like, how the hell did I get home? I don't even yeah, remember the it's drive. It's like, what happened to the last 10 minutes of driving? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly it's very right. much that. So I'm, 
like growing up, I didn't even think anything of it. I was just kind of like, oh, got to play to click again, you know, like whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But now growing up, I'm so thankful for it because I, yeah, I mean, it's playing a click is just natural to me. And even when there is no click, I'm like, cool. I feel like it helped immensely with time. And even if I don't have click, I'm able to keep pretty good time, I feel like. So mm-hmm. I feel like playing yeah. with the click and staying well-rounded, like don't just focus on one genre. Um, mm. Don't just be like, I love metal and I want to be a metal drummer and only play metal. It's yeah. like, um, try and keep yourself well-rounded, play different genres. Um, uh, yeah. Explore different genres. I, I know I have so much fun playing like fusion jazz and funk. I think that stuff is so fun to play. Mm-hmm. Um but then I also have moments where I'm like, I don't want to play anything but rock, baby. Like, mm-hmm. bring on the rock. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bring it on. So, um, <laughs> yeah, if anything, just try and be well-rounded. Um, I think that's such an important thing. Um, and the that's click awesome. thing, obviously. That's great advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. That's exactly what I would say. Cool. So I guess we'll finish it out. Uh, we have... Um, we have a Patreon, uh, and there's a number of people who support us. We refer to them as the inner circle. Mm. Um, they're kind of in on everything we're doing before it happens. And uh, and so they sent some questions knowing that you would be coming on, and uh, so I'm just going to fire some of these off quick. Thanks, inner circle, um, for helping my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, kind. <laughs> uh, so Greg Rennick wants to know, uh, what's your process for writing drum parts? Ooh, that's a fun one. Um, it kind of varies for this album. Um, for past albums, it's mostly been like kind of Mitch will write songs in general and he'll kind of put in like a, a whatever drum beat in it and then send it to me. And if I can think of something better than cool, like we'll change it on the spot kind of thing. But for this album, it, me and Mitch, for the most part, wrote this whole album FaceTiming each other or we rented wow. an Airbnb and just mm. wrote it like in the living room type of thing. Um, most of it was us FaceTiming each other. And like uh, I I have like a little DW wow. practice pad set. And like sometimes I like one of the songs derived from me playing not a metal drum beat at all. Like it was like a funky beat. And I sent it to Mitch on that drum pad and he... He just misheard it differently. In his mind, he mis he heard it as like this like big epic like uh-huh, and he was just yeah. like, oh dude, this is crazy. <laughs> and like it like it was just like that's kind of how one of the songs turned out. There that's was another amazing. one that it was that it was just like I was just I think I was watching a show or something, or I don't even know. I was walking around. I had like a drum beat come to mind. I voice memoed it and just sent it to him and then <laughs> like 15 minutes later yeah. we had you know a minute 30 seconds of a song from this drum beat because wow. it just made sense you know um so That's yeah cool. it was a lot of us facetiming together and um i'm not very good at guitar but i feel like i can beatbox my way my beatbox a guitar pretty well yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like i'll yeah. be like for for like, <laughs> right. like we make we actually laugh about this quite a bit like i think there should be some sort of like meme video like how to write how like metal people write like metal songs because a lot of it was honestly like me <laughs> facetiming him and be like yo what if it's like yeah. <laughs> he's just like oh yeah or like noodly noodly boom cool. boom like noodly that. noodly boom yeah. boom <laughs> so like it's just boom, like boom. stuff like that <laughs> yeah so yeah. um yeah it's been there's been times where i sent him like two minutes of just drums and I'm like, here, write something to this. <laughs> I won't tell you what guitars awesome. I had in mind, but I want to yeah. hear your ideas first before I tell you kind of a vibe that I had for it. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of me personally, though. I if Mitch sends me a part and I have to write drums for it, um, Mitch will typically program what he th- like what he had envisioned first. And then mm-hmm. um Based off of that, I kind of do things that I wouldn't typically. I try and write things that I wouldn't hear, that that I wouldn't like, kind of guess of my first time around doing it. And uh, if it sounds good, cool, like kind of work with it. If not, then just 
keep messing around with it. I like I said, I always try and I my my goal for for a lot of sections, I guess, or at least my creative goal is for for people to hear a drum beat and be like, oh, I would have never thought to put this drum beat in this part. Yeah. Like, like that's cool. Mm. That's very creative. That that's I guess my ultimate goal when I'm writing stuff. Like unless it's like, yeah, it's very obvious. This drum part just needs to stay simple. Like right. there's nothing exactly. to this. Right. Like right. it has to support the in the end, the drums have to support the music. That's yes. very big for me. Sure. Um so yeah we just uh, went over that in our last episode actually so we just talked about it yeah Yeah, that's awesome that's great yeah i'm very big on that i actually when i learn songs i mostly like listen to guitar because especially when i'm writing drums i tend to like to accent like guitar stuff here and there and so i listen a lot to like Hmm. mitch's playing as we're writing or doing any of that stuff I like that approach. That's cool. Yeah. I, I was kind of wondering how you write drum parts too. It's so that was a good question by Greg. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. yeah. And actually, <laughs> Thank you, Greg. in addition to that question, here's kind of a same similar question, but uh, uh, Ken Zappla uh, actually revealed to me that you're part of two bands. Yeah. I didn't know this. <laughs> or, is that true? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he wants to know do you use different techniques and writing styles for your two bands? Um,. Not necessarily. Um, and nothing left is uh, <laughs> nothing left is a couple. <laughs> it's a bunch of friends of ours. It's two. It's Brandon and Ryan. They were the guitar players of Four Today, mm. and um, okay. it's them. Me. The vocalist is Danon, who was the vocalist of uh, Bullet for Pretty Boy, um, and then okay. uh, Devin is our bass player, who was the bass player of Take It Back. So it's kind of just a bunch of us who have toured together before and are just really close. And during Four Today's Farewell Tour, um, Ryan and Brandon, we were joking around and we had said like, oh, we should do like a, we should just do like a fun early 2000s hardcore band. And (laughs) after like a couple of days, like they came up to me like, hey, would you really actually want to write some like music? Like just for fun, (laughs) like not try and be a big band, like just kind of. Yeah. Do some music for fun. So anytime we do nothing left stuff, we call it our fishing trip. <laughs> our, <laughs> our group chat just kind of Ryan like or Brandon, that. you know, mostly Ryan will send like a, uh, will call me or something. He's like, hey, you down for a fishing trip for two weeks in this month? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> nice. I'd be down. I don't have anything. <laughs> so we just kind of do That's these awesome. little short 10 day runs or whatever. But uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, as far as like drum writing, I it really doesn't change for that either. Um, that's, that was actually, if anything, that was my first time I'd had ever sent, I sent like a full three minute song of just drums. Like, like I wrote a whole song, just drums. And Mm -hmm. I was like, here, I have guitars in mind, but I just want to like, if you want to change some stuff, change it. Like here's just three minutes of me playing drums. Like if you want to write something to it and it ended up like being a song, we like changed a little bit of it, but um yeah one of the songs on our first ep was started off with me literally sending like three minutes and thir- it's like 75 percent me just sending that and then the rest <laughs> we just kind of fiddled with it in the studio and finished it off <laughs> that's, that's awesome. a good strategy that's great yeah it's it's pretty that's fun great. <laughs> i find yeah. i find that if a guitar if the guitar player in your band is doing a lot of the writing uh and they're not a drummer, <laughs> I find that they're going to be very happy and very excited if you, the drummer, are yeah. sending them just yeah. like a bunch of different drum beats. Right. Um, because, I, I mean, at least from what I've been told, like it's kind of like they have their selected few drum beats that they know, mm-hmm. like go for certain parts. But, yeah. Beyond that, they're kind of stuck. Yeah. yeah. Beyond that, it's kind of like I don't know, like a new drum beat. Like, yeah. Alex, send me a cool new drum beat. Yeah. Like, so, pound yeah. beat. If anything, I, beat, I, I would highly, beat. I would, yeah. If anything, I would highly suggest that to any drummers like listening. Like, if you and your guitar player are writing stuff, like, just try and write a song by yourself, like on drums, program it or something, or record yourself, like set up your iPhone and just record yourself playing your drums for like three minutes and just send it to your guitar player and be like, Hey, if there's anything in this that you think is cool and you have a good idea, like, cool, let's use it. That's a great idea. I'll, I'll do another one. Like, 
There's been times where yeah. I there was once where I recorded myself just playing drums for like 10 minutes, kind of reviewed and sent Mitch my favorite parts. Like, hey, I think this could be something cool, could turn into something. Hey, I think this 30 seconds could turn into something. Like, um, yeah, I think that's a great way to just get ideas out there. Because hmm. in the I, I think yeah. just getting ideas out is important. Yes. Like eventually mm. one will stick and one will be cool. Just keep dropping them. Just ideas. keep putting them out. <laughs> yeah. More ideas, yeah, not exactly. less. Yeah. yeah. That's 100% yeah, exactly. true. Yeah. That's really good, man. <laughs> well, uh, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know you've got uh, an album to get back to recording <laughs> in. Uh, the next room yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh dude thank you so much for for coming on the show and and uh is there anything uh that you've got going on drum videos new album coming Ooh, out release I mean, date new something album, anything you'd like to plug we got this new album um i mean it's honestly not going to be out for a bit probably <laughs> we're not even finished tracking but this album's going to be fun um we have uh, now that I'm in this house and I'm able to, I'm going to probably do a playthrough of all the new songs and maybe some older songs. Awesome. Maybe do some. Nice. I love that. Some requests. I don't know. Maybe cut or, cover so. uh, Daddy Griner over there. <laughs> <laughs> do an ABR song or something. <laughs> hey, you should come. Come to Pennsylvania. You can record right here. I just built a studio. I just got a... Um, I just caught an Allen and Heath digital mixer. We we can we can oh. have some fun, man. I, I wish we lived I on the same coast that. because Right? I, oh, I've really man. I've really <laughs> I've really had fun touring with you. We'll be back on tour again eventually, but um, Absolutely. If in the interim it'll, it'll happen come again. Out. If you guys haven't Tim has to come out for Alex, a couple of days too. <laughs> if you guys haven't heard of Alex or or his drumming or or Silent Planet, um go ahead and check him out. Um his his Instagram is Mr. Alex uh Renick, R-E-N-E-C. That's that's M R for- Alex Renee C. Renee yeah. Renee C. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Alex. That's um, another fun fact, actually. That's my full first name. <laughs> are I you typically serious? Is it only really? yeah, I typically go by Alex everywhere, but my full first name is Alex Renee. <laughs> okay, I did not know that. And then the wow. C is obviously <laughs> for your last name. <laughs> so there you yeah. go. Um and check out Sound Planet's um latest record, right? The Night God Slept, which we talked a little bit about. Uh that's our uh, actually yeah technically that's we just re uh, retract and remaster that you record. Just that's our yeah. first record. Oh okay. Um, but we just remastered and retract that, so that is actually is our latest. It's the our latest, latest on mu- Spotify. music we put out. But yeah, it's the one I've been listening <laughs> nice. to, and we talked a little bit about it. I think it's it's cool. I I, I didn't know anything about um, the lyrical content or the messaging on it, but it's I'm gonna go back and listen to it now that I know more about what you guys were thinking and Garrett was thinking. So. Yeah. Please tell the guys yeah. uh, we say hi. I love you guys all very much, and um, thanks Absolutely. so much for coming. I love on you, here, boys. Man. Thank been, you so much for having me. It's been a yeah, blast. <laughs> <laughs> it has absolutely. It's, it's been, been a delight. delightful. <laughs> it's been delightful. It's been delightful. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was so good at accents, and I'm not, because that would have been like a like. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, really, yeah. Anyways, practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, thanks for having me. All right. Okay, so that was a great conversation. Thank you so much, Alex, for coming on the show. We've been wanting to have you on, and uh, it was just so much fun to uh, get a bird's eye view into what it's like to record drums in your house, um, what it's mm-hmm. like to live in California with the sun shining in. I mean, it, it, it was it's always fun to see what other people's lives look like during COVID-19, and obviously, Silent Planet's making the most of it, right? They're yeah. like, okay, we can't record in a studio. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Court do it in our living room <laughs> and you know it's going to be awesome he talked about yeah. it like oh yeah the day that we um 
recorded the episode, I think, or the day after, he was like, yeah, we're going to get every floor tom in this house and put them together and do some tribal stuff. Typically, in my case, those don't turn out well. Those like percussive you know, elements that you have in your head. Oh my gosh, I'm going to yeah. bring this marching snare drum in and play this Slipknot style beat. Man, in my experience, half of the time that stuff is just cool in your head and then you hear it recorded and it's yeah. not... It's not going to work. So hopefully Alex had better luck. I guess we'll find out when the record comes out. Yeah, yeah. So here's a question for you. Uh, a little off topic, but yeah. in this case, so so you have, out of necessity, a lot of bands recording from home. Um, do you think that these new albums that are going to be coming out are, are going to actually sound better overall? So So what you're losing, obviously, from recording at home is... A uh, you know a professional sounding studio. Maybe the mics aren't quite as good because you have to work with whatever your engineer has. Um, you know the sound of the room isn't quite as fine tuned. Um, but what you're gaining from it is this comfortable comfortability mm -hmm. of being in your own home, being in the place that you created this music. Um, that you know you're, you're literally sitting in the same place that you just wrote this drum part like a week ago or hmm. two weeks ago or whatever. Right. And uh, you have this ability to be more creative and more comfortable. What do you see? Like, how do you weigh those? For me, no. For me, yeah. that does not that does not necessarily... For me, they're not mutually exclusive. So if I'm, mm -hmm. if I'm writing something at home and I record that thing at home, which I have experience doing now with MGL and my playthroughs, yeah. my performance is not necessarily better. In fact... If I'm in a high profile studio where we're paying $800 a day to record in this room and we have this engineer, mm -hmm. my performances are better. Yeah. There's more on the pressure. line. Exactly. Okay. I do well gotcha. under pressure. When that red light is on, I'm going to play better than when it's not on. When there's mm -hmm. money on the line and and there's people there to see a show or to hear a performance, that's when I give it everything. Yeah. Um it's a weird psychological thing. We've 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 handed at it a, a few times. Yeah, I think it's a valid. Have. I think it's a valid point though, and I think it's that s certain things will definitely supersede the the pre two thousand you know twenty twenty yeah. COVID home studio recording. <laughs> um, in terms of like having more time to be creative and try different yeah. elements, but overall, I don't think that you're going to get a something so different that you're going to say, oh my gosh, that must have been recorded in that guy's bedroom. Unless it just sounds like crap, then, yeah. then maybe. Uh, hopefully that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, I'm, I'm curious to see, you know, everyone in their mind, and it's more of a, I think a growing up thing, but everyone in, in their mind has like a specific year where, man, that music in that year, all those albums that came out that year were so good. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if the albums produced in 2020 are going to have like a similar effect. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, that was the music that was, that was like the COVID music. Yeah. Like that was the music <laughs> recorded during the quarantine, you know? I'm just wondering if, <laughs> like, if people are going to like it better, if it's going to stand out in people's minds, if yeah. it's going to sound any different at all, like if there's going to be a difference. Lyrically, maybe. Know. Like, we need hope. Yeah. We will survive. <laughs> We will endure, or like the darkest <laughs> of dark, you know, the end, yeah, the end yeah. of the world, People apocalypse. People dying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think lyrically, probably you can make the argument. Um, that's true. Yeah, that's know. a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, really good conversation with Alex. Really glad he came on. Yeah. So thank you, Alex, if you're listening. Um, we'll have to have you on again sometime. Absolutely. Uh, really good. That was good. So to wrap things up. Uh, unless you have anything else to add, Matt. Um, yeah, we um, have some cool stuff going on. Our uh, inner circle group uh, is um, comprised of some of the coolest people in the world, um, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> uh, and I finally got around to doing that rap song. Uh, so if you guys are interested in hearing me completely embarrass myself... <laughs> um, go ahead and visit patreon.com slash holy ghost notes. Um, there's a bunch of cool um, incentives uh, at different tiers. Um, we have Jonathan Thomas and Adam Gray doing some drum lesson videos uh, each month for um, uh, the double stroke tier and above. Um, if you do the triplet tier and above, you actually get uh, media access to mattgrinderlessons.com. 
Um, and uh, and at every tier, you get access to our incredible community group, um, which is uh, thriving. Um, love you all, guys. Shout out to the Inner Circle. And um, yeah, um, check it out. Patreon.com slash Holy Ghost Notes gives you an opportunity to support us as a podcast and, uh, and get some cool stuff in return. Uh, other than that, uh, we got some cool devotionals uh, up on our website, theholyghostnotes.com. We call them, calling them peace devotionals. We just finished the book of Mark, I believe. Um, so uh, check those out if you're interested. And make sure you're using the hashtag Holy Ghost Notes on your drum videos. Um, always love reposting uh, Groove each week. So be sure to do that. Is that everything? That's everything. Man. You're getting better okay, at I'm this. Get, I'm getting better at this. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting better at listening because you got it. Yeah. <laughs> I just sit here. You got it. Keep going. You just, yeah. You're getting, you're getting good at listening. Uh, I'm learning too. Yeah. 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 Listening is a good thing. I think uh, the best people are the best listeners. I think. Uh, so you guys listening to that. this podcast are much better people than we are because we just talk. And you guys just endlessly, <laughs> endless talk. <laughs> but uh, on that note, thank you guys so much for listening, and uh, we're looking forward to talking to you guys again soon. <laughs> That's right. And as yeah. always, you know what time it is. Oh yeah. Peace. Peace. Okay. With all this linear filling, I'm getting spiritual cause JC and I chillin'. If you're here cashing in, then you've been misled. See, you all got rewarded with this rap and <laughs>